Neighbors, welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're gonna do one of the best hot pots I've ever had uh, when I was living in Japan. I love to eat sukiyaki. In Japan, it's one of their iconic stews and I don't know anyone who doesn't like sukiyaki. Thin strips of beef, you got some vegetables, then you got the tofu and you have like a nice bowl of rice to the side and I'm telling you, it just, it hits the spot every time. So if you're having a bad day at work or you have a lot on your mind, Learn this recipe and treat yourself in the future. All right, we're gonna start off with a good amount of vegetables. Let's go ingredient by ingredient. The first one we're gonna do is tofu. So I emptied the water out. For the size, I like to cut them in half first. I like to get these pan fried marks. It just makes it look nice. So what we're gonna do is take the moisture out of this first. Just put this on a paper towel. Just wrap it up and then just put it aside for now while we work on the other vegetables. Within sukiyaki, the preferred noodles is shirataki noodles. These noodles are made from the fiber of the konyak plant. It's also known as the quote unquote miracle noodles because they're very high in fiber but very low in calories. So it's really good for dieting. I'm gonna give these guys a quick rinse. In here. And then we're gonna squeeze the water gently out of these noodles. That way when we put in the sukiyaki sauce, it soaks it in. You just squeeze the water out. Then we have three shiitake mushrooms. We'll just pull out the nub. And for decoration, you'll typically make a little star. You can just go in slightly at an edge like that. Is this necessary? Completely not. All right, that looks good to me. And then besides the shiitake mushrooms, you can just use a mushroom of your choice. I'm using these. I forgot the name off the top of my head, but Daniel, write it here. Oyster mushrooms would work well. Actually, anything is okay. Then we have some Chinese cabbage here. Three leaves, should be good enough. We'll chop the cabbage leaves into three sections. It's one, or maybe four, two, four. Then a forearm length piece of spring onion. I recommend using the white portion. We'll make long cuts at a slant. Very good. And then let's do a half an onion. Cut it perpendicular to the grain. Not too thin, like something like that. And then I was considering adding some carrot, but to be honest, I never actually eat the carrot. There's too many other good things. So the coach is gonna make a hard decision, but he's gonna sit out this game, sorry. As a substitute, we have a special ingredient. This one is called souk in Korean, also known as mugwort. Sounds like something out of Harry Potter. Very simple, we'll trim off the ends and we'll toss these guys in at the end. Now for our sukiyaki, we're gonna add in some anchovy kelp broth. You can also just use kelp broth, but uh, I have the packet, so throw an anchovy kelp broth packet in and just let that cook for a few minutes. Yes, the sukiyaki sauce. Let's go. We're gonna use some mirin. We're gonna do two third cups. That's around two thirds cup. Medium is rice cooking wine and it has a sweetness towards it. I think we need a slightly bigger place. Then we're gonna need half a cup of soy sauce half a cup in and then the third ingredient we're going to use some sake three tablespoons worth or if you go to a korean mart you can also use chungju which is rice alcohol that's one three and then one for the chef <sighs> then my friends we're going to put in two tablespoons of sugar this is going to balance everything out let's get this mixture wow you see all the sugars right there we need to knock that back in mix it up and then Pour everything out. Then just a medium flame and let's just bring it up to boil so that the alcohol evaporates and that sugar melts. All right guys, and then our broth is ready as well. Put a few soup ladles of the broth in here. All right, and this is good enough. Once it's about to come to boil, the sugar is melted. You don't feel anything at the bottom. Just turn it off. Just pour this out. Using oil for the frying pan, we can grab the meat that we're gonna use and we can grab like a fatty piece. Get your frying pan out. Get it on a high heat, and once it's really hot, put that beef down. This one's still pretty lean, but I'm gonna just use some, move it around, and then we're gonna put our tofu pieces down. Yes. Oh, don't worry, we'll eat this. Mm. Same thing for our onions, we'll get a little bit of charred marks on them as well. Same for our spring onions, we just want some color. I know you'll be tempted to put oil, but don't. Wow. We'll turn it over. Ah, looks beautiful. Same thing with our onions. Beautiful. Yes, yes. Flip them around. Beautiful. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Little tattoos on our vegetables. And then we'll cut them into little slices. All right, so let me begin. 
put in our tofu then of course some of our cabbage we'll put our roasted green onions down here as well all right and then our beautiful onion let's put that there then our noodles of course to one side you gotta have a lot of these noodles yeah then of course our crown daisies just for appearance i'll cut off the stems and put it back here then of course our meat let's place that right in the middle all right and neighbors we're ready to do some skiaki let's get lit Remember when we are pan frying the ingredient, we waited for the frying pan to get really hot? We are going to do the same thing with this pot because that way when we add the soy sauce, it already starts bubbling on the bottom and it just infuses each of these ingredients quickly. All right, do you hear it raining? you hear some of that crackling sound? Just get a soup ladle's worth and we are going to put it around. And then you hear the bottom of the frying pan going. Just add enough so that you have a small layer on the bottom of your pot. Get it over a little bit more. And you're gonna smell that. Just let the ingredients cook away in the soy sauce for a little bit. All right, guys, and then we're gonna add a little bit of our broth. Yes, 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 yes. Now it's waiting till the end because it looks pretty, but we want to definitely get the meat in there as well. All right, guys, so that the skiaki sauce gets nice. All right, and then now you can break up the onions as well and just let all the flavors come together. Yes. Reduce the heat to about a medium low so you get a gentle simmer. Wow, and just take a look. You got the shiitake mushrooms, your beef, these beautiful tofu. We got some mushrooms in the back and you got those cognac noodles. You open the door, it's really cold outside, but you have this in front of you along with the piece of tofu. Oh my gosh. Let's give it a taste. See where the flavor is at. Oh my gosh. This is so good. This brings me back right to Tokyo. There was a spot in Ikebukuro, which I used to go all the time, and, and this is bringing me back towards that. Wow. Of course, just add more ingredients as you want. If it tastes a little bit salty, add more of the kelp broth or the anchovy and kelp broth. If it starts to taste too bland, add in a little bit more of the soy sauce, and you can season to taste as you go. Hot broth, the more you add, the better it's going to taste. So let's add in. All right guys, this dish, I think it demands a bowl of hot rice. Let's get more of our beef on. Ah, we haven't even touched the shiitake mushrooms. All right, this would taste even better if I let it cook for longer, but hey, I'm hungry. And uh, <laughs> I think that's the bite. Oh, I forgot one thing. You can dip it in this raw egg. Yeah, just crack one egg. It's nice. Over in Japan and in Korea too, like eating raw egg yolk is not a big deal. But... So this is how I like it. Get a piece of meat and some mushroom. Dip it in this sauce. Bon appetit. Oh my gosh. It's like a perfect seasoning. I know. Daniel, Wait for me. Can you bring a spoon? Wait. I want to drink this soup. Wait for me. 